Well, hello there, guys, and welcome back to our stream today. We are, of course, taking a look here at Order of Battle Pacific, um, or excuse me, Order of Battle World War II, um, the uh, Battle of Burma, or Burma Road, um, as we've called it here. And, of course, it takes place in Southeast Asia. It takes place in Burma, as well as uh, quite a few other regions, uh, India, China, parts of Western China, I should say. Uh, so this is quite a fascinating little DLC. We're going to go ahead and jump in here. And as we can see here, it's explained to us that the British Empire, already struggling in the war with Germany, suffers another gruesome shock when Japan launches a major surprise offensive across the South Pacific. So we're going to go ahead and launch. And we're just going to wait until the actual official time of the stream. Uh, make sure that we get as many viewers as we can here, and then we'll get started. Um, but we're definitely going to go ahead and, uh, and jump in here, guys. So give me one second. <clears throat> Let's see. I want to make sure we've got our YouTubers as well. I've, I just had a YouTuber page open. So let me see if we can get back to our YouTube group. Got a few people. It's slowly growing, guys. I'm glad you guys are slowly but surely joining uh, our YouTube channel. We still have more people on Twitch, though. Okay, here we go. So 1659. All right, guys. So once again, good to see everybody here. Um, I think we can probably go ahead and uh, at least begin to get started. Um, let's take a look here at what we're supposed to do. Okay, so as you can see here, Japan strikes. Following increased tensions with the Western powers, Japan has launched a widespread surprise offensive against its adversaries. Uh, British forces already drained by two years of war with Germany must now resist the battle-hardened Japanese across Southeast Asia. And Southeast Asia, I think, especially in World War II, is an area that's really not discussed too much, so it's fascinating to kind of see something happen here. Now, we're starting with Operation Krokol. Uh, over here, it explains that we're actually in Thailand. Uh, Japanese troops have landed on the Malayan Peninsula as part of their widespread offensive in Southeast Asia. To challenge this invasion, an ad hoc British force has launched a preemptive attack into Thailand. Now, one really strange thing, and something many of you probably already know, is that Thailand was actually pro-Japanese. Um, the Japanese were able to convince the Thai people, and perhaps with some degree of truth. How's it going, Inbu? Uh, that the British wanted to colonize them. So, of course, they instead got colonized by the Japanese. Isn't, isn't war beautiful? Anyway, guys, um, welcome. Uh, so we're already getting a few people. We're going to go ahead and get started here with Operation Kroko, uh, and hopefully we get a victory. I uh, definitely want to beat back the Japanese. We're starting off with the British, but in this particular DLC, you get so many great things. You get a ton of new special forces units. You get some new nations. Uh, it's really quite fun. So let's go ahead and continue. All right, we've got the mission briefing, guys. So let's take a look here. In an effort to challenge and delay the Japanese advance from their beachheads in Malaya, British and Commonwealth forces have been assembled for a preemptive attack through neutral Thailand. We cannot predict how the Thai will react to this violation of their territory, but must be prepared to face resistance from some of their security and police units. Our ultimate objective is to reach the ledge, a narrow road wedged between hills on one side and a river on the other. By blowing up the hillside, the route should be blocked and thus significantly delay the Japanese advance. Further to the west, a column of Indian troops is tasked to secure the additional Thai border checkpoints. This should prevent the Japanese from using this major roadway in the, as, their, as their advance into Malaya. Uh, finally, a third column is expected to arrive soon on the most eastern road. It is important that, unless our flanks are threatened, each column pursues its own objectives. Interesting. So, uh, as you can see here, we've got the capture and hold Bitong objectives and stall the Japanese advance objective. Um, and to the north, we've got our Indian Army troops. So this is really cool. Uh, colonial infantry, as you can see. We also have a little bit of money to spend. So I'm going to go ahead and try to purchase... I love the British tanks. I'm taking the Matilda. And of course, the Matilda is not the greatest tank at all. But it gets the job done, I like to think. We'll take another British unit here. Let's take some Gurkhas. So this is, of course, a specialty unit, guys. Uh, for those of you that don't know about the Gurkhas... 
Uh, this is uh, from Nepal. I believe it's from Nepal. They're actually a special forces unit. They have a weapon called the Kukri. Uh, some of you may know about the Kukri. It's basically a curved knife, curved butcher knife, curved uh, blade, as you can see. How's it going, Mark? This is one of the strategy series I've never bought, says Mark. Well, I hope you'll buy it today, my friend. And hey, Kenneth Billings. Uh, I'm sorry you missed Quadra, Ken, although uh, tomorrow we're going to do our streams a little bit later, so maybe you'll be able to catch uh, a game then, but we are playing some Order of Battle. Uh, Burma Road, of course, being our newest addition to the Order of Battle family. I'm going to go ahead and end this turn. Now remember, each of these groups has to go after their own objectives. So these Indian troops are going for the checkpoints. There's one there, there's one there. Uh, and for the British troops in the south, we're going for Bitong. Let's end the turn. Gotta love that that wonderful uh, music there. And it looks like we've already spotted a Thai police unit. We're gonna go ahead and open fire. Oh yeah, baby. I think they're in trouble for sure. Uh, let's keep on moving. We're basically avoiding the mines. We could take them out though. Probably not a bad idea. I'm gonna take them out with this vehicle. This unit anyway. Uh, and bring this vehicle forward. Let's also bring our heavy infantry forward, as well as our beautiful British infantry. And as, as you can probably imagine, in this particular DLC, there's a ton of jungle. It looks like the Thai police are trying to hide from us in this jungle, but we're going to root them out. Be more than happy to have them surrender to us. It's, it's no fun having to kill the Thai police. Uh, but unfortunately, we really have no choice. You know, we've got to do what we've got to do. Set the turn. It looks like the Indian forces are going to be uh, playing essentially by themselves. We could assist them. Uh, there are definitely missions in this game where you get to play as the Indian forces as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. But for now, they're sort of controlling their own forces, which makes my job a little bit easier. There we go, great shooting. Are they gonna go after the armored car? Amazing if they got a kill here. Nice, wonderful shooting there. So our colonial infantry is doing very, very well. Um, and obviously they need to get to those checkpoints. To make it easier for them, we could send one of our units north or we could get some planes, but I think for now we're just gonna focus on Mithal and taking that. got some enemy strategic and tactical bombers here causing us problems and we are getting 15 per turn so here we go the second column the supporting column of indian units have begun their advance towards the thai checkpoints they report taking fire from thai royal police units and japanese aircraft as you guys know thailand is a monarchy uh, so clearly these royal police units are maybe a little better trained than, than some police units especially if their job is to protect the royal family although i, I doubt that's their particular job so we're going to move into Betong. I want to be careful moving in here, and I think I did the right thing. Because had I moved into the space I wanted to go to, we would have immediately been hit by the enemy here in an ambush. So let's attack this first group of Thai police. Let's move another unit forward. We're going to be firing from the woods. Oh no! We've got enemy soldiers here! Thai police units in the jungles. We should have expected that. And actually, these aren't jungles. This is just regular forest. Starts to get jungly, though, pretty soon. Uh, let's move our tank forward. Now, the tank is usually not good for attacking a town, let's be honest. Um, so I'm going to go for this unit in the woods. Tank's also not good in the woods, but as long as we're not in the woods, I think we'll be okay. Pretty good shots there from the enemy. This unit, I want to go ahead and reinforce, and we'll move this guy up. Let's take a look here at the shit. I keep meaning to try the demo, but I've got so far many, many other games to go, says Mark. Yeah, man, it's definitely worth taking a look. I mean, and how's it going, Great Jamie? Glow them up, he says. We've already got some uh, World War II fanatics here. It's good to see you guys. Um, this actual series of games, Order of Battle, has a tremendous amount of DLCs. And this is only the most recent one, which of course focuses on Southeast Asia. Uh, hi I highly recommend you take a look at it. It's really, really fun. 
All right, let's end the turn. We're turning it over to our colonial forces. And of course, we have no control over these guys, unfortunately, but they've been doing a pretty good job on their own. So let's hope that they can clear these tie checkpoints and ultimately get to the ledge, uh, one of our main objectives. I was gonna say show them no mercy, but honestly, in this situation, we did technically attack Thailand without a declaration of war, without even a warning. I'm not really that surprised that they're fighting back. I think any country probably would. Uh, so if I was able to actually command this directly, I would say don't hurt the Thai police. You know, obviously if they shoot at you, shoot back, but try to capture them. Uh, let's let's make these guys our allies. We don't need uh, Thai enemies. But unfortunately, we've made it. Great shooting there, by the way. Matilda as well. back to the capture of Beton, and we've got a third column guys the final column has arrived composed with australian units their anti-aircraft guns also prove useful against the japanese attacks uh so we can start moving these guys closer to Beton. no enemies ambushed no, actually we actually did get some pretty good shots with that aa gun i'm gonna go right after that enemy and it looks like they're taking cover in this village here one of our Australian units to liberate the villagers. Not not the German kind of liberation. We know that doesn't work out too well. Um, let's keep moving forward here. We can actually focus on this unit in the jungle. They're probably going to end up attacking our flanks anyway, so it's probably good to get them off our back. Heavy machine gun fire. Keep it up, boys. <clears throat> Pretty nice. Um, we're almost into Betong. I feel like we could probably just drive in, but you never know. There could be an enemy here, so just very, very lucky there. And we'll keep attacking this unit. Let's fire with our heavy weapons team and hopefully finish this guy off. Oh, you little bastard. So he's actually managed to escape, and that's just a single unit. Unfortunately, there's really nothing we can do about that, at least not now. Let's also get rid of this enemy point. I don't know what that's doing there. And I guess we'll have to leave it to our uh, Indian friends to decide for themselves what's best. By the way, welcome everybody, both on YouTube and Twitch. Um, Great Jamie says, it's, it's nice you can finally play as the British. I wonder what the next DLC would be. That's a good question, and it is nice that you can finally play as the British. Um, and of course, especially in the, the Southeast Asian uh, camp, or Southeast Asian theater, I should say, um, a lot of the, the British problems or, or the British battles, etc., really aren't mentioned as much as a lot of the other World War II campaigns or battles. So I'm really glad that we've delved into this particular part of uh, World War II history. I, I personally find it fascinating. Let's end the turn here, guys. I think we've done a pretty good push so far, uh, but we've got a lot more work to do. Let's go ahead. <clears throat> hmm, actually, we could attack here with this unit. We could do a lot of damage to th these guys right here. I think I'm gonna go for it. In the turn. Best luck to our colonial troops. They're definitely trying to hold out until the last man here, but I think our colonial friends have managed to take the first checkpoint. That's great news. 
We've obviously got to move on to the second checkpoint now. And it's very important that we move towards the ch the other check well the checkpoint from the other side as well. We want to try and meet those troops in the middle. All right, Matilda's being attacked. I'm not at all surprised. We're in the city. The enemy has a slight advantage, as you can imagine. If you're infantry firing from buildings, uh, the tanks have to move through the streets. You have a slight advantage if you if you happen to have some sort of anti-tank weaponry. You could actually do pretty well. Okay, guys, we're back. And, of course, first thing I want to do, I'm sure you guys feel the same, is destroy this armored car. I'm going to try and bring the Vickers. Of course, for those of you that don't know, the Vickers is a machine gun unit. Of course, the famous Vickers machine gun company. And I'm going to keep chasing this guy. I'm not giving up that easily. So as you can see, we're trying to get to the ledge here. Um, obviously, getting to this checkpoint would be excellent too, but I think that our our friends can probably deal with it. Now let's see if we can open fire on one of these Japanese planes. We've got our unit set up in the jungle. Probably a pretty good place, as long as you can see through the trees, to actually have an AA gun. It's very hard for the enemy to spot you. I'm sure that uh, during the wars, or especially during the several different wars of the Vietnam War, a lot of American pilots were actually lost over Vietnam due to missile batteries in the jungles. Of course, those are missile batteries, a bit more advanced tech, but still, I mean, the AA guns in World War II were pretty damn good. Uh, let's go ahead and attack here, try to wipe out this unit once and for all. Good work. There we go, boys. Now, we could start moving in, but I think it's a better idea to keep them here just in case. We're going to attack once again with this unit. And we'll move in. Also because we could still get a few attacks with our other units. That's the main reason, really. Oh, yes. Engineers with their flamethrowers. Extremely effective against uh, units in a city. We could also attack from our with our guys from the jungle here. Wonderful. And I guess we'll go ahead. Fire, why not? Beitong is ours, guys. We have liberated this beautiful Thai city. It's now under our control. Of course, we still have a lot of work to do. we still got to move forward with quite a few units. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit this unit. And I will follow it. I will destroy it. You know, obviously, our main goal is to destroy the ledge. Uh, this is an area, well, to take the ledge, I should say. This is an area we really need to get to. We still have our Gurkhas back here. So I might move our Gurkhas up. And I love the transport they've got. Now, Gurkhas are made to fight on foot. There's no doubt about that. But we're actually going to put them in the universal carrier here. Just for expediency. Just because I know we can take the enemy out here quickly. Here we go. The city is completely our, under our control. The Japanese hold no point of it at all. Uh, and Play Gaming. How's it going, man? Haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Great Jimmy says, what do the Thai arm their police with? More lethal than the cops on GTA 5. Um, I think the Thai police, as far as I can understand, do get a rifle um, and pistols. Um, it's sort of a paramilitary force, uh, if that makes sense. So in other words, they do call themselves police, but they're almost as well trained as the army in terms of infantry tactics. Uh, and here we go, Damien Nudushima. How's it going, guys? Mark, Damien Nudushima, Van Bishop, good to see you again. And awesome. I appreciate you telling um, Mark here what the game's about. I really do, Van. Um, you're, you, you absolutely are putting it in a great way. Now, this particular um, campaign has 13 scenarios. So that's it's actually one of our biggest, if not our biggest. I think it's one of our biggest. Um, so you're going to constantly have stuff to do. Not to mention, of course, the fact that you've got multiplayer. Um, so yes, Mark, um, to answer your question, of course, 
well, I guess Van's already answered it for me. I appreciate it. But basically, yeah, th this is the Southeast Asian campaign. We will take a look before we end the stream uh, at the entire map so you can see all of the different DLC you could buy for the game. And there is a lot, believe me. Uh, but right now, we're just kind of trying to uh, to play with Burma Road, which is the newest DLC just released today. And I am loving this thing, man. I really am. It's really an exciting DLC. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let our Indian units over here do their thing. And I hope that they know what they're doing. We could also purchase some more units, but I really wanted to get a fighter or a tactical bomber. And I'm not sure that these guys are going to do very well. Also, we don't have the requisition points necessary. So let's end the turn. Actually pretty good targeting there by the Japanese bombers. Oh man, they are turning around. Now they're attacking us. Obviously the Japanese are not affected by civilian casualties. They are bombing a city at the moment. I think they still have some troops in the very northern point of this city. What's happening here? Are we getting some reinforcements? You guys see that? We might be getting some reinforcements, guys. Very interesting. Oh my goodness, this is incredible. The Japanese are also attacking the Thai. Uh, so, the Thai are in a terrible place. They're being attacked by us, the Allies, as well as the Japanese. Both the Allies and the Axis are attacking the poor Thai people. I feel terrible for them. Uh, but there's not really much we can do. Uh, we obviously have to stop the advance. And we could finish off the enemy here, but we've actually put ourselves in a really bad spot. And that is to say we've gone outside of the supply range. So I am going to try to get an easy kill here. Excellent work, boys. So they took out an armored car. They're going to get back in the supply range. And we're also going to finish off the Thai police unit. There we go. We, I already see a Japanese tank there kind of hiding. I'm going to move up. Pretty effective shots, I have to say. Um, let's see if we can't finish off this Thai police unit. Wow, they actually escaped. Oh boy, we just got ambushed. I believe this is our Gurkha unit as well. Not looking forward to that. I don't like to see our Gurkhas getting hurt. It's just slightly hilarious that the Japanese are attacking units that are fighting us. I mean, haven't they ever heard of the enemy of my enemy is my friend? In general, if I were the Japanese, I would just install a puppet government here and basically say, well, the British are clearly attacking you. We want to help. Uh, so support us. Of course, I think probably dealing with the Thai government would be a lot more complex than that. Um, Van Bishop is saying uh, he's a solo player, but each campaign takes me about 25 to 40 hours for a single playthrough. Heck yes. I mean, that is the one thing I will say about Order of Battle, uh, among many things, is the replayability of this game is huge. When you factor in the multiplayer edition as well, when you factor in all of the additional units, all of the campaigns, all the different things you can do in the game. Yeah, man, it's the replay. Re, the replayability is increasing every day. Um, obviously, with the addition of Burma Road, it's just one more huge increase in the replayability of this particular series. Uh, and this is a franchise. This is a series without a doubt. I mean, we have not stopped. We're still making Order of Battle stuff. So it's it really uh, pays for itself. I guess you could put it that way. 
All right, I think we can, we've, we're done with movement. Um, I'm probably going to move the Matilda out. And I'll take these units over here. We've got some British infantry. Move them forward, but honestly, I probably want to let them rest next turn. Uh, I will try to take out the enemy spotter plane here, the Aichi. Unfortunately, close, but no cigar. Uh, and I think it's time to go ahead and end this turn. Want to make sure we've done everything we can, and yes, we have. We'll end the turn. Oh, maybe not. What's this? Oh, that's right. We still have this unit. Yeah, I guess we can move him here. Uh, I'm not thrilled about his position because if we leave this area, we're leaving Betong open. But you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, let's end the turn. Get him, boys. Come on. Good defense there, boys. Oh, wait, those are Japanese soldiers. My goodness. The poor Thai police. I feel really bad for them now. Oh, my goodness. The Japanese just zapped them. Okay, guys, it's our turn. So um, a lot of people have asked, and not just in this stream, but uh, the last stream that we did as well, why are these Indian troops called colonial infantry? So for those of you that don't know, India only won its independence in 1947, two years after the end of World War II. So this is still, these Indian troops are still um, a British colony at this point. They're very, very close to getting that um, that autonomy, but they're not quite there yet. And one thing I will tell you is that um, in this campaign, I'm not going to tell you what mission uh, or how many missions, but I will tell you that one of the new additions is the Indian Army um, to this campaign. So you can also play multiplayer with the Indian Army. Pretty fascinating stuff. They've got all sorts of interesting units like the Chindits, the Gurkhas. The Gurkhas we already talked about. These guys have Kukri knives for close combat. They're probably regarded as one of the top special forces in the entire world, um, certainly for the British Army. And even though they're from Nepal, they fight for both India and the UK. Um, to this day, there's a Gurkha division in the, in the army of the United Kingdom, um, despite Nepal being completely independent. Uh, as well as India. So really a great group of guy, well, a great group of guys if, if you're allied to them, a pretty vicious group of guys if you're not, um, as you could probably imagine. So I think with this unit, we absolutely need to get some reinforcements. He's almost dead. Um, we're only going to be able to reinforce him by two, so I'm sending him back to Betong. I'm going to see if we can reinforce him more here. If not, we can, we can stand away a little bit, but not too much. I'm also going to fire with, actually, let's try to get the Matilda in here. Try to move the Vickers here. Open fire. And I want to finish this bastard off. Let's go for it. Good job, Matilda. All right, I'm going to go ahead and fight the Japanese units here. I think I'd rather keep my attention focused on them as opposed to my own men. 
And with this guy, we could probably bring him reinforcements right now. He could get four as we speak, so we'll do it. Of course, we're always going to try to take the enemy out of the sky. But I think my main focus is going to be that Japanese infantry. So once again, I'm going to get some reinforcements here. Get some reinforcements over here. We do have time. We definitely have time. Um, and you can see here, that little red... Uh, I don't know if you guys see the red dots. Not the Japanese flag. I'm talking about the red dots next to the Thai infantry, next to the 7 there. What that means is that the Thai are currently cut off from supply. They're useless, basically. You know, they really can't put up much of a fight. They've got very low ammo, very low food. You know, they're, they're ready to give up, pretty much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and attack this unit. And I'll explain my reasoning in a second here. We're also going to keep our position. But I'm hoping that this Japanese unit will target that Thai unit instead of our British unit, who actually has some pretty good defense here in the Asian village. Um, also known here as... Uh, what's the name of the town? Someone tell me. We're going to keep on moving. So... Our, our allies have come across a bit of a roadblock, literally, but I think they can break through it and get to that last high checkpoint. We're going to keep on moving with the rest of our troops, anybody that can move, of course. Go for the Japanese. And if they run, I'm going to follow them so that the Thai soldiers don't attack us. But they're definitely in a tough spot, no doubt about it. So Van Bishop says, um, I really appreciate the focus on less popular scenarios, winter war mornings on Burma. I think I've conquered Scott Stalingrad in 30 different ways. <laughs> That's awesome, Van. <laughs> that is really cool, man. Um, yeah, no, I mean, we certainly focus on a lot. I, I would say out of all those, um, the winter war is probably the, the most popular. You know, people that I would say that is one niche war that does get a lot of attention. People do seem to like the winter war. Uh, I guess it's, you know, a country like Finland being able to defeat a behemoth like the Soviet Union. Kind of a big deal. Um, I can understand why people are into that. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and end the turn here. We're turning it over to our colonial friends once again. Let's hope for the best. by the colonial uh, infantry. They're definitely managing to keep this armored car back. I think this might be the stop of our friends advance and this is why it's so important for us to also move up uh, we can see the colonial units are definitely being stopped now the, the japanese are putting up a really aggressive defense and they could potentially turn these guys back we might need to take that last high checkpoint and obviously with a checkpoint open uh, the biggest problem with that is that allows the japanese through uh, if we're at the checkpoint, we can defend it. The Thais, they cannot defend these checkpoints. The Japanese have already taken them, and there's just no chance 
uh, for them to defend it uh, effectively. You know, we'd love to give the Thais their independence. Uh, we'd love to let them fight their own war, but it's just not going to happen. Um, as you can see right here, our, our, our Indian troops are also having some difficulties, but I, I have more hope for them to attack this Type 92. Lucky we didn't get hit with those. Uh, move the Matilda up. So this Type 92 Osaka is a really serious uh, vehicle. And actually, in terms of a defense, or in terms of an armored vehicle, it's pretty good. Uh, it's almost like a tank. It does actually have a turret gun on top, as you can see there. But this once again shows you that the Japanese way of building, specifically heavier vehicles, was uh, very different uh, from the American or British way. And quite frankly, in terms of heavy vehicles, the Japanese really didn't have very good tanks in general. They had decent armored cars, but it really had to do with the area they were fighting in. Uh, most of the time they were fighting in Southeast Asia or East Asia very jungle area or hilly area where vehicles, heavy vehicles, otherwise wouldn't be able to move anyway. Uh, so that kind of explains that. Of course, an exceptional air force. But in terms of their vehicles, I, I really wouldn't, wouldn't think too much about them. Uh, I'm going to move up here. I'm going to try to hit this enemy spotter plane. And there we go. We finally got him. He's going down immediately, down in flames, into the jungles. I don't think they're going to find that body. Now, our Gurkhas are here. They've they've dealt with a lot of damage. We definitely want to reinforce them. Like I said, this is probably our most elite unit. Uh, let's move behind the enemy here. And the reason we do this, if you have a unit on the back of the enemy or the, on the flank of the enemy and a unit at the front of the enemy, you can actually get crossing fire. So we're going to go ahead and open fire here. Look at that flamethrower by the engineer. And we're going to take this British infantry unit. And actually, I could try to get two kills here. Uh, let me see. I'm going to try to kill two birds with one stone. Even just killing the Japanese, I'd be happy. I don't care about the Thai policemen with one unit. And there we go, guys. Dead Japanese unit already. We are on the road getting to the Thai checkpoint. At least I hope so. We still got a British unit here. I think we're going to move them up into this village. It's currently burning. Not in the best state in the world. Uh, and we're going to back off here and take a look at um, the actual missions or the different scenarios because we've had a few people asking about how many missions or, or I should say how many different scenarios does the game have, etc. Uh, I do want to show you guys that. So we're going to jump into that. We're going to delve into that here very, very soon um, so that you guys kind of get an idea of what you're getting if you get Order of Battle, which, by the way, is also... Um, something you should pick up, uh, as well as our board game sale. I believe we also have a sale on Order of Battle. Don't quote me on that, uh, but it would be a great time to pick it up. And this is, uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to have the difficult task of finishing off the Thai police. I didn't want to have to kill them, but sometimes you got to do things you don't want in a war, right? I think so. The Germans and the Russians certainly know about that. Let's move up here. Oh, even the Americans with the atom bomb. Oh, it's just everybody in World War II. Let's take a look here. Except maybe the Thai police. <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe Thailand and its police are, are the not guilty ones here. Um, so we're going to turn it over to our guys again. Uh, let's just end the turn. And we're turning it over to the Colonial Infantry. perfect kill there so they are moving a little bit but once again i think they've been stopped by the japanese and i think we're gonna have to get to that checkpoint all on our own there's an interesting attack from the jungles not bad of course the enemy actually managed to do more damage to the indian armored vehicle uh, than it did to the infantry
wait. I don't think they're going to be able to make it past this, guys. It's completely up to us. Right, our, our Australian troops just got vaporized. We've got to take a look at that tank. That thing was pretty damn effective. Um, and this is where I wish we had some bombers or some artillery. Probably something we should have purchased in the beginning of this campaign. Uh, but it is what it is. Another thing to consider... Um, let's wait for this battle to end first. Another thing to consider is not only do your forces gain skills throughout a campaign, they also gain specializations. So specializations, uh, we'll take a look at that here in a second. Uh, of course, let's go ahead and I'm going to actually save this just in case you guys want to see the rest later. Uh, I'm going to put auto save best viewers. Let's go ahead and save. And this way, if we want to come back to this particular game, we can always do that. Um, but let's head to the menu. And we'll start taking a look here. I know a few of you were asking about this. I'm not doing the game update. Um, but these are the different DLCs we've got. We've got the Winter War. We've got Kriegsmarine. We've got Blitzkrieg. Um, this is, of course, focusing on the Germans uh, attacking or the invasion of Poland and plenty of other things. Uh, Kriegsmarine is all about the German Navy. And uh, it's definitely just like the current game we're taking a look at, Burma Road. Kriegsmarine is something that's not really usually discussed. The battles of the Atlantic, they're not really talked about too much. Um, whether there's a lack of interest or maybe just a lack of interest in naval warfare, we're not sure. We've also got Rising Sun and Morning Sun. Uh, Morning Sun may be my favorite of all the DLCs. And the reason I say that is because this focuses on the, um, the Sino-Japanese War, the Chinese-Japanese War, um, the second Sino-Japanese War, I believe, uh, which is just, you know, it's amazing because for all of you World War II fans, you would be surprised at before World War II even occurred, how vicious the war was between Japan and China. I mean, just absolutely vicious fighting, vicious um, attacks against each other, total hatred. And uh, it was, if you study it, it's something quite fascinating. So this is the closest we can get to actually playing a game that focuses on that Sino-Japanese war. Definitely worth a pickup. We've also got US Pacific, uh, really fun, basically, you know, uh, many different fights with the United States um, against the Japanese enemy. And of course, we've got the U.S. Marine one. And this is, of course, battles of the U.S. Marines, Iwo Jima, things like this. Definitely worth a pickup for sure. Um, let's take a look here. Anyway, guys, I really want to thank you all for showing up. Uh, I, I had a great time showing the game off to you guys. Uh, I hope we get some people that are willing to try Order of Battle uh, after watching this, and uh, more importantly, are willing to pick up the Burma Road DLC. Remember, you can start with any DLC you want. It really doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. Um, so I would definitely pick it up. And don't forget that Order of Battle by itself is free. Um, the only thing you have to pay for are the DLC. So you can get a few free missions just by downloading Order of Battle on Steam. Highly recommend you guys do that. Even if you're not going to buy anything right now, if you're not sold yet, go take a look at that and, and see what you think. Um, I think you'd really, really like it. And uh, if you enjoyed this stream, you'll certainly like it. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a great time. Tomorrow we will be streaming uh, at the same time, and we'll also be streaming at 8 p.m. Uh, CEST. So I hope to see you guys there as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Van, for uh, some, some really good explanations here uh, to some of the people asking questions. A lot of times I don't have time to, to look at the screen or to pop out and take a look. Um, and we didn't actually set up our second monitor today. So I really appreciate it when, when people do that. Uh, when they have good responses, and, and Van did there. Thank you, great Jamie, Kenneth Billings, Play Gaming, uh, Mark, Damian, Narushima, so many good people coming to this stream today, and I really want to thank every single one of you. We're going to go ahead and end here, and uh, I hope to see you on the battlefield, my friends, although hopefully we'll be fighting on the same side. Take care. Have a great day.